Hey, what's going on everybody? Alex with you here again as usual. Thanks for dropping by for yet another chess video. If my voice sounds a little bit different or like squeaky-ish in this video, it's because I somehow misplaced my microphone. So we're just gonna have to make do with the built-in uh, microphone this time around. So it is what it is. Uh, by the time I make my next video, I'm sure the microphone will be found. But I've got something really exciting to share with you guys. I bought another chess set from the House of Staunton. This time around, it's the Zagreb Woodtech 3.75 inch chess set. The box to which you see right over here, even though on top of the box right over here, it says Golden Knight chess set. If we flip this over right over here, it says Zagreb Woodtech 3.75, I believe, or something like that. It has a bunch of different languages here, two, only two of which I actually know. I'm from Ukraine, but I can speak Russian. So here's what it's, I don't think this was written. I think it might've been written in China or somewhere. I don't know, look, in English it says, chess is a game of strategy for two people, period. Next, uh, next paragraph. Although it is a highly complex and sophisticated game, period. Chess can also be enjoyed at a simpler level by inexperienced players. Period. That's kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> but check this out. In Russian, it says chess dash is a very enticing strategical game for two faces, or in this case, people. That's fine. Next paragraph. Although the game has simple rules, nonetheless, uh, what separates this game is the multitude of different combinations and their difficulty. Was that the same stuff that was written in English? I don't think so. I wonder what other stuff it says, because I tried to read French over here, and although the first thing that says that chess is for two people seems to be on all of these different languages, I think the second paragraph is like completely different, but it is what it is. It was just kind of funny, but... So, I actually purchased this, it was like $59.95 on House of Stoughton. Um, at the time that I bought this, uh, they had, were running like a 10% off discount store-wide. They're always running some kind of a discount, but it's just a question of how many percent you get. 10% this time around, and plus 10% for my golden membership, because I bought it initially like years ago. It cost me $100, but it allows me to take an additional 10% off off of any, pretty much any purchases off of House of Staunton, which it, it was okay. It, it seems, especially if I can kind of combine it with the other one, which I can, sometimes you can get a pretty good deal. Problem is nowadays what I've seen with House of Staunton, it used to be I could get uh, any number of purchases and I've done a, a num number of purchases through House of Staunton and, and the, the shipping would either be like you can pay for shipping or you can get free shipping. I think they still allow for free shipping, but you have to spend like more than $100 or I'm not sure what the cutoff is. Because here's the thing, this was retailing for $59.95 or something like that. With all the discounts, I was able to knock it down to uh, I think $49 or $48, which I thought, okay, this is reasonable. And then I had to pay $12 like or $13 shipping. That was the lowest shipping cost that they had. And they're literally like, I don't know, 200 miles away from here? Like, I don't know, I just, I feel like for like less expensive chess sets, if you're purchasing something for like Scholastic or something, like a plastic chess set, you sometimes end up paying almost as much for the shipping as you do for the actual chess set. So if you're looking to cut costs, I don't know if House of Staunton with the way that their shipping is right now is the best way, but you know, if you're buying like a, a more expensive chess set or more expensive items or you're combining things, then I think that you'll get that free free shipping and that would make sense. But I have by now purchased all three of the Wood Tech chess sets that are available on House of Staunton. I've done the original high polymer resin Wood Tech chess set uh, like more than a year ago. I think it was almost like two years ago by now. And I've reviewed that. I can um, I can leave a link below for you guys to see that one if you are interested, but I don't know where it is at this point. I'm not sure if I sold it. Uh, I may have sold it with something. I haven't been able to find it. I remember it was a, re a really big box, but we've moved since then and I really haven't been able to locate it anywhere. And my memory, I'm just like, I, I can't remember whether I sold it or not. I may have sold it. If you guys are, by the way, if you guys are interested in knowing 
what chess sets that I have sold or like returned or whatever, stay tuned. I'll just tell you guys the ones that I've got rid of throughout this video. So if you guys, you know, continue watching this video, you'll you'll kind of get to know which ones I still have and which, which ones I've sold. But anyways, I still have the European Woodtech chess set right over here. And we'll actually, when I open this one up to show you, I'll compare this one and I'll talk to you guys about a couple of very interesting things that I wanted to mention before. So uh, let's go ahead and open this up. But before we go ahead and get started, I'm going to say that my first chess set that I no longer have is going to be the DGT Centaur. I think that a lot of the electronic chess sets that I've had are just becoming redundant in the fact that they're kind of doing the same thing. And the DGT Centaur just wasn't, it wasn't allowing me to play online and it was really hard to update the engine or anything like that. So although it was a really nice board, I ended up getting rid of it. So yeah, let's go ahead and I'm going to bring this, the camera closer and we'll take a look at these pieces. This is the chess set. Alrighty, my friends, so we're going to go ahead and start off with the kings right over here. The very first thing we notice is that we have the variable color finials. The same motif will be repeated on the queens and the bishops. I believe that when I've done the review to the wooden Zagreb Prestige chess set from the House of Taunton like two and a half years ago, like a long, long time ago, um, it had the same type of variable color finial situation. Um, I no longer have that chess set, so that's another one that I um, ended up selling, actually, and I almost sort of kind of regret selling it because it was one of the really nice chess sets that I feel like everybody should consider getting. That was that prestige one, just because it was like $110 is how much I ended up buying for, so it was a great deal for a wooden chess set. But, so yeah, um, you notice that although there's these wood grains and everything noted in, in, in this particular chess set, it's actually not wood, it's wood tech. And I'm not really sure exactly, like if you look at it and you say, I don't know, it really to me looks like a plastic chess piece with sort of this wrapped around vinyl or something. It doesn't, it's not super smooth. It's got a little bit of this matte finish to where when you grab it, it doesn't like fall out of your hand or anything but it's it almost feels like a plastic chess set with something that's been coated or wrapped around it because i don't know it just feels that way um it's really not super heavy chess set so the king's supposed to be like the heaviest piece and the king actually measures at 34 grams for the dark king and 40 grams i don't know why it measures 40 grams for the light king but there's a six gram difference um, what exactly <laughs> what it, what exactly is different here? It's not like they use different woods. If we flip this on the on the on this side, we see that just like the old Zagreb wooden chess set that I reviewed, they have this sort of a um, sort of this convergence towards the center where when you s sit the piece down, see how it like goes downwards at the sides right over here, and therefore the actual amount of felt does not start at the very periphery. It starts off, as you could see, like more inwards. Is it good, bad? I don't think it's a problem. Um, I, I'm sure they're happy to have utilized less felt than they needed to, but it's. I think it's nice. It's just a, it's a different design because like I said, look at the way the, on the bottom, they come in kind of like, like downwards a little bit instead of just like flat. So that's just how it is. I just wanted to point that out. They're pretty stable. 34 grams, 40 grams, I don't know, maybe they just use bigger piece of weight in there, but that's that's kind of what we have. Um, and then we have four queens. As usual, we've got four queens. The queens are going to be this much shorter. Let's see, this much shorter than the king. So not too much shorter, but the top is kind of nicely done, as you see right over here. It's got this this interesting element to where the top portions here kind of stick upwards instead of like sticking out because sometimes they'll stick out on some of these plastic chess pieces but here it, it's they've made it kind of nice as you see right over here it's a little tiny detail i feel like they could have just completely eliminated the sharp points and made them like rounded and i wouldn't mind that either 
like they've done with the um, Dubrovnik chess set. I believe the Dubrovnik ones are like fully rounded. But you see alternating tops as well, alternating color. And then same kind of uh, smaller, a little less felt on the bottom. The queen measures at uh, 35 grams. So the queen being that much shorter than the king is actually slightly heavier. So it's, this is 34, this is 35. And then the light piece it measures at 35 again. Yeah, that's kind of weird why that's the case. Next we've got the bishops. Bishops are a little bit shorter. No, I got the wrong bishop. Here we go. Now we've got the bishops here. Bishops are a little bit shorter, not not the same height because I know some people are really particular about how much shorter the bishop is with regards to the queen. We got a little bit of a slope down and pretty much the same rings we see here on top are represented here. All the rings, see if we look at them this way. There we go. So far, you see that everything's been designed to kind of really complement each other. So none of these pieces stand out as being belonging to another chess set, which is nice to see. And all the all the like wood grain and everything kind of looks very similar. The bishops weigh in at 29 grams for the dark bishop and 29 grams for the light bishop. So nice bishop. There's no cut in the top, as you see right over here. It's just no no cut at all. Uh, but we do have the little top ball here. And a small amount, small amount of felt. Moving on, we have the uh, the knights. So the knights in this particular chess set are going to be unique to the Zagreb. I believe when I initially reviewed the Zagreb Prestige chess set, it had a similar sort of a downward facing knight. In this case, they made it super like sharp, as you could see right over here. In fact, this is what's kind of interesting is that they made this line here and they made the bottom portion like parallel. You could still fit like something like a piece of paper through the bottom of it so it's not connected but it's just kind of interesting to see the design of this downward facing knight. Almost looks like the Leningrad chess set more so than like the Zagreb because I believe when I reviewed the Zagreb it was downward but not that much downward. I think it was like downward but not at such an extreme angle. I think it was like this much but in this case that's Pretty cool, pretty cool looking knight. Not not a whole lot of details as you guys can see right over here, but still the the shape of the knight just kind of makes it easier to grab. So you're you're sort of grabbing by this depression and it's just either here, here, and it's just not, not a lot of projections off to the side, but it still still looks really nice and ergonomic. As far as the weight of the, the dark knight weighs in 34 grams. And the light knight is at 33 grams. So really, really cool. Alrighty, now we've got the rooks to look at. Rooks are pretty much normal. Nothing out of the ordinary. Top portions look approximately like this. Um, both on the on the dark and the light. The, uh, the rooks are pretty light overall. Uh, the... Uh, the dark rook measures at 20... 25 grams and the light rook measures at 25 grams as well so uh, these pieces by the way I wanted to let you know they feel hollow so if I can see how like how light of a sound they make when you hit them it's I, I believe they're hollow they might not be but it feels to me when you when you hit it, it feels hollow inside. So we've got the pawns right over here. Um, pawns, interestingly, they have a really big big base. I usually don't see base this big. I mean, look look how how much amount of of base portion is is the knight in this case. It's kind of interesting. I mean, the top stays the same most of the time, but in this case, like wow, that's that's big. As far as the weight. Um, 18 grams for the dark one and 18 grams for the light pawn. If we compare the Zagreb wood tech chess set to the European uh, wood tech chess set right next to it, we see that um, 
The Zagreb one does look a little bit shinier, which is nice. The uh, the European one is kind of very matte looking, so it doesn't cast off any any sort of light. When even inside, you see, you can see it's just very very plain. And then the uh, the, the European one is says 47 grams, and the dark ones at 47 grams, so substantially heavier pieces here was 30 what was it 34 grams and 40 and here's 47 47 here's the differences between the queens between the zagreb and the european with the chess sets a little bit heavier probably for 40 grams for the dark one and 40 grams for the light one here's the bishops that we see the bishops for the zagreb and the european one a little bit different and the european one weighted a little bit more i think 35 grams and 35 grams, so just just a little bit of a difference there The European one did have the cut on top. So this is a big difference here We see that the uh, Zagreb chess set has a kind of a, a little bit more refined looking knight with uh, Sort of more elaborate features as opposed to the European one did have that sort of German knight kind of look here We got the rooks um, as you can see here, the, the two different rook varieties do look a little bit different. Most of the time, rooks is a um, chess piece that doesn't vary a whole lot, to be honest with you, between different chess sets. But nevertheless, slight differences on top. You can see this one's got a wider top here, as opposed to this one's kind of smushed together a little bit. And then the I find the shape of this particular rook to be more proportionately um, shaped. The way that I would feel like a rook should be shaped more here. It's nice, but I find the top to be a little bit too like narrow. And then the bottom portion, I don't know. I just, I feel like you should have more width here on the top. And then it should get to about this width here in, in the neck area or whatever you call this, the body. And the base should be a little bit wider than the top, but there should still be that sort of uh, the way that this one is aligned. I think this this is more or less what I would I ideally expect out of a rook. As far as the weight, the uh, 34 grams versus like 26 grams, so a little bit heavier, a little bit more bulky, and then for the dark one is 33 grams. The felt also looks a little bit different. Neither pieces have really elaborate expensive felt, just something to cover the bottom. Um, I think both of these chess pieces could be easily played on a, a wooden chessboard like this, as well as a roll-up like mouse pad or vinyl chessboard. I think that because they're not too heavy, you don't really have any issues with where you're going to play these pieces. Lastly, we've got the pawns right over here. We've already seen the Zagreb pawns. These pawns just a tad bit taller, I think. I think, um, but. The interesting part is the way that these almost feel like when you're looking at the top because of the way that the bottom is kind of sloped downwards like this, it almost looks like it's floating in the air. Uh, but yeah, that, that's what we have here. 19 grams for the European wood deck and 19 grams for the, um, so they're all 19 grams, I think. Yeah, all 19 grams. So they all weigh about the same. Just a little bit different. This this ball here is a little bit bigger. Um, which one's easier to grab? I think they're they're both pretty good. If I had to choose one versus the other, I'd probably say this is a little bit easier. It's got a nice nice sort of rounded neck here, and it's got a sharper one here. So if you grab by this part, it feels it feels like when you when you grab it by the neck, it, it kind of digs into your fingers a little bit more, but you're not going to grab it that hard and it just feels like a little bit more comfortable when it's rounded right here at the very top. Combined with a really nice chessboard, kind of like what I have right over here, which is that Greek chessboard, the video to which I've shown a couple of months ago. I had this handmade and it's a Droiki style chessboard at a 2.25, I believe, 2.25 square inch. Any chess set on this type of board is going to look really nice, but you can see that um, in comparison to like a standard uh, plastic chess set, even the plastic chess sets that are kind of have that like cream color instead of the blanche white, it looks really nice. It, it, it kind of blends in much better on a wooden chess set as you guys can see right over here. It looks better. Um, 
I might have a little bit of a shaky camera here, but it does look better like with the way that the pieces are made to look like wood and they, I feel like, are polished just enough to make them reflect and really make that grain stand out a little bit better. I feel like this, these pieces particularly look well on this board and uh, I think they look nice. I think I think they look nice. I think they would also look pretty well on a regular chessboard, like a green and white one. Why don't we go ahead and set these pieces up on a mouse pad board and I'll show you what that looks like. Pieces look really nice. They're not too small, as you guys can see right over here, with respect to the 2.25 inch squares. We have just the right amount of space that the pieces occupy so they don't feel lost in the squares and they feel really nice I feel like they look nice and they feel nice when set up on a mouse pad board here the standard like light and green color I do have to say that they look surprisingly nice too they just kind of blend in well what do you guys think about this combination if you pull this particular just set out at like a tournament if you're of course allowed to have a unique color one, it really does look pleasant to look at. So, as well as the light pieces here, they look really nice as well. Um, they have a really nice sort of a comfortable feel to them. They're not like sharp. Um, they almost remind me of like the Dubrovnik chess set. Like the knight is very nice and subtle. It's not protrusive. The king doesn't have any sharp lines, that neither does the queen. It it just kind of looks, I don't know, looks pleasant, looks really nice. Um, I think that this might be a chess set for some people out there looking for an inexpensive option of a plastic-like, plastic-like chess set that resembles most closely a wooden chess set. Um, so something you know especially for people out there that are looking to to be taking something to tournaments where they'll just be like throwing it into a bag and going and they don't necessarily want to take their wooden chess set and you know with the fear of like scratching it up or anything so this is nice what do you guys think it looks really good it does it does look good and it really does look good here in the room i'm not sure if the camera is going to do justice and being able to show it to you guys the way it really is. I had is. some reservations before I purchased this chess set just because I already have so many different plastic chess sets but I really was purchasing it just to show you guys. Well, and maybe I'll donate this chess set somewhere or give it away. It's a really nice one though, to be honest with you. I have a lot of different plastic chess sets and this one kind of... I even like this better than the European one, to be honest with you. Um, I really don't know what happened to my high polymer acrylic, the other wood tech chest set that I had. That one was a little too shiny and too tall and too, I don't know, it just felt a little bit interesting. Maybe at the time when I made the video I was super excited about it, as I am most of the time about new chess sets that I acquire, but now looking back, I like something more subtle like this, like a 3.75 without any sh crazy, crazy sophisticated details or anything like that. It just, it looks nice. Um, for the price, how much did I pay for it? About $60. I'd say that's a little bit on the high end for a plastic chess set because you can get a plastic chess set anywhere between like $10 to usually maximum is like $24. So $60, a little bit higher. But then again, you're getting something that, that it looks really nice. If you are looking for a really good deal for like wooden chess sets, with the same size, same details, uh, probably like the Zagreb or the Leningrad chess set, whether on House of Sun or one of the other ones, probably going to set you back somewhere between 120 to close to 200. So definitely expect to pay a little bit more for a wooden chess set. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, so what second chess set that I had no longer have with me. Um, Millennium E1 board. I played on it a little bit and then I just felt like it was a little too small. Once again, out of all the electronic chess boards, it's just, it, it was redundant just because it did the same exact stuff that some of my other chess sets do and I ended up just, yeah, I returned it. So the only thing I see that could have possibly been improved a little bit with regards to this chess set is the overall weight. I feel like the piece is a little bit on the light side and they could have made them solid instead of making them hollow 
when you're exchanging pieces or you're sort of knocking one piece against the other, it does feel a little bit too light. And that is one of the things that I've encountered a long time ago when I decided to upgrade one of my earlier, earlier, like back in 2007 or something. I had a really nice plastic chest set that really felt like stone and I loved it. Then I ended up paying like almost a hundred or yeah, it was like a hundred dollars to buy this like prestige plastic chest set that had the same sort of a hollowness to it. And I thought, what? And then when it broke, one time a piece fell or something and it broke, the inside was hollow. And it actually was pretty like pretty thin walls overall. So I was like, a hundred dollars for this? What I find to be even more important than the weight of the individual pieces is something that a lot of people don't necessarily talk about um, is the center of mass of these pieces and uh, or the center of gravity in this case and that is basically the concept of where exactly is the balance of the piece. Now I don't want to bore you guys with the technicalities of the center of mass, we're not in the physics class and I know a lot of you guys are already familiar with what the center of mass is like but let me just give you an example. Here's a Rubik's Cube, okay? And the Rubik's Cube, is, although it's not a solid uh, it's not solid piece of mass, inside it has a mechanism that kind of looks like that and to this mechanism these outside little cubes are attached but because it's symmetrical inside and out in every single way we would expect that this object made out of plastic has a center of mass directly in the center and I feel like that's the case it's a symmetrical object both height wise now when you spin when you spin the Rubik's Cube it behaves as if the center of mass is right there in the center which is really important for this particular object to have the center of mass right in the center because you're moving it around all the time, you're flipping it, and therefore it it has to be in the center because you're moving it in all the different directions. If for some reason the center of mass was off to the side, then it would feel lopsided. Every time you would move it or, or turn, you would you would feel that, that the center of mass is off center, even though you wouldn't know exactly what's going on. I feel like you you would pay attention to that fact that if, if it was somehow um, tweaked or changed to where it was, you know, the mass is off to the side, it would feel odd, okay? Even though nobody would tell you that, it would really feel odd. Now, some objects, they have a center of mass that's purposefully set off to the side. Like for example, right before you see a little tiny, uh, I think it's a meat uh, tenderizing hammer right over here. Um, hopefully it's in focus. But um, the object is solid in this case made out of some kind of a metal and the center of mass or the center of gravity is actually like right over here. You would expect for an object this, this long that the center of mass should be closer to this way, but because a lot of mass, a lot of basically substance of this object is located here, that if we were to melt this part down and reproduce the same little part here on the other side, it would look exactly the same on both sides because of where the, the center of gravity is. Now the reason why a hammer like this is designed to have the center of mass towards the very top is because when you're hitting with this particular object, the, the velocity of the object moving this way, because it's not moving, you're not hitting like this, although you could be, you're hitting like this, so the fulcrum is in the center. The velocity of the handle is actually a lot smaller or slower than the velocity of the top. So the speed of this particular part when it moves is substantially quicker on top than it is on the bottom. Therefore, all the mass that's been put on the very top, mass times velocity gives us momentum or something like that. And so the greater amount of momentum, the greater the effect of the hammer. So that's basically why the hammers with the longer handles are actually a lot, deliver a lot bigger of a punch than hammers with the small, ha uh, small handles. So that's hammers for you, okay? <clears throat> a regular butter knife that we see right over here, actually what you see on the outside, because this object is solid, is pretty much what you're gonna get on the inside. The handle, although this is not a very sharp knife, the handle is uh, a little bit thicker than the the blade so the center of mass is actually skewed off the center just by approximately this much see right over here even though the actual center is like right over here it is 
because of the, the fact that the handle is a little bit thicker. But at least you'd be able to predict where that center of mass approximately would be just by looking at this because what you see on the outside is what you get on the inside. And that's a very important consideration when it comes to chess pieces because most of the chess pieces, whether or not plastic, whether it's high polymer resin, wood, most of the time they add some kind of weight to the bottom to give the piece a little bit more weight. And as a result, what you see on the outside is not what you get on the inside. There's different materials inside. First of all, this particular chess set, to me, it feels hollow on the inside. So although the object occupies this much space, it's actually different on the inside. Very much so different. The center of mass is going to be somewhere right over here. I know they have different devices to be able to show you guys this better, but today I'm going to show this to you in a very simple way, or hopefully it will exemplify what I mean by center of mass. Here we have a marker and uh, the base to the uh, Lego piece, and I made this little tiny sort of fulcrum uh, that I will show you how it works here in just a second, but we can actually set this up more or less like this, okay? And it will stand, all right? And so if we take the king right over here and we put him, here we are. Um, I set it up more or less. That's what we would expect out of a plastic chess set, especially a hollow one. The center of mass is, is really far at the very bottom base. And uh, the rest of the, the weight here is mainly positioned in the very base of the, of the piece. What exactly does this mean for us uh, while we're playing chess? You might say that this, the center of mass or the center of gravity really doesn't mean a whole lot. Well, it does mean things for objects that move. I mean, chess sets don't move a whole lot. They do a lot of standing around like this, but we do move chess pieces when we pick them up and put them somewhere else. Have you ever tried running with sneakers on? If you have, you know how that feels. If you put um, boots on and tried running those, you will notice that because the boots are a lot heavier, it will, when, you, when you're running, the boots will feel a lot different because the momentum of the heavier boots will actually propel you to make bigger strides. I tried running in army boots and it feels substantially different than running in uh, sneakers. So uh, same goes here. Um, because most of the weight is distributed downwards, when you feel it the most, it's not necessarily when you pick it up and down, just because when you pick it up and down, you don't have that much of a feel to it. But we're, when you're moving it in this or this direction, so when you're moving it forward or backward, I mean, clearly, when we're playing chess sets, if you don't want it to be creating a pendulum effect, you need to pick up the chess piece by its or close to its center of mass, which is like right here. So in this particular case, because the center of mass is below this little ring here, if you don't want any pendulum effect, every piece you need to pick up on the bottom right over here, and then it won't be swinging. The closer you pick up a piece to the top, meaning the, the further away you pick it up from the, from the center of mass, the more you're going to feel this sort of a swinging effect. And I've mentioned this before on some of my videos, but you feel this a lot more in plastic chess sets just because they're lighter to begin with than wooden chess sets. But you do have that sort of a, a, a kind of a swing. And I'm not over exaggerating this, but when you're playing a lot, you definitely feel a difference between like a plastic chess set and a wooden chess set. The heavier plastic chess sets, like the solid ones, do feel a little bit better, but the hollow ones are just, it's, it's not terrible, it's just it feels different. It feels different. Okay, so my third chess set that I no longer have is the DGT Pegasus. DGT Pegasus uh, was a chess set that I uh, I thought it was a really nice chess set, but I just, uh, like, once again, uh, I have a smaller chess set that I really enjoy playing on, that that's the Chestnut Air. And now the Chestnut Air has been effectively replaced by the Chestnut Evo. They're both about the same size. The, the DGT Pegasus is approximately similar size to the Chestnut uh, Evo and the Chestnut Air. There was not much different that I could have got with using the, the DGT Pegasus. I would say if the DGT Pegasus was the very first board that I purchased or the only board that I got, then I'd probably say, yeah, but uh, I've since then had so many different boards that I no longer saw the need to be redundant in the electronic chessboard. So I ended up 
getting rid of that, that one. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button and stay tuned. I've got a lot more different videos coming forward. So super, super exciting stuff uh, up ahead. And uh, everybody stay safe, play more chess, and I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Bye-bye.